Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for um, Introduction to Essential Oils and also um, DIY Gifts with Essential Oils. Um, Jen, thank you so much for coming back and doing another thank program with us. We're really glad to have you. Um, before we begin, I just want to go over some housekeeping things. Um, you can ask questions throughout this program. Um, Jen, we'll dedicate Q&A more towards the end, but um, right? Okay, yeah. but you can certainly ask as things pop into your into your mind. Um, ask any questions that you want. Um, you're gonna uh, if you're on a laptop or a desktop, you're gonna look for where it says questions, and then you'll type in and send. Um, if you're on a tablet, just look for the question mark symbol. Tap that symbol, and then you'll be able to type your question. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me again. Um, I love doing. Uh, webinars for well, I used to do it in person. I actually, um, you know, used to be at the Montclair Library, but now, you know, 2020 brings new situations, so we're we're doing webinars now. And I'm just so grateful for everyone who took the time to log on to the webinar and for the Montclair Library to be hosting it. Um, I think you know, there's no greater time than than now to have community. And even though we can't be together in person, um, I'm just so glad to be able to reach to you through through the computer and um, and be able to connect in this way. So we are talking about um, essential oils today, and I'm going to go through my uh, presentation here. So my uh, let me just tell you, my name is Jen. I have been mentoring with a certified clinical aromatherapist for over 10 years. I teach essential oil classes all throughout New Jersey. Um, it is a passion of mine, not only about essential oils, but replacing toxic, um, toxic chemicals that are found in your home with more plant-based products. So that's my mission is to help turn your home into a healthy oasis. And, um, and yeah, so we're gonna talk about essential oils today. So what is an essential oil? An essential oil is actually the, the fluid that is found in the plant. So if you go and you get a, a peppermint leaf and you rub your hand in onto the peppermint leaf like this, and then you smell your hand and it smells like peppermint, it's actually the essential oils that have transferred from the peppermint leaf to your fingers. And that essential oil works in the plant to be um, the immune system for the plant and delivers um, essential, you know, compounds throughout the plant. It acts as, um, you know, delivering hormones. It's it's very very vital to the the life of that plant. Um, so more healthier plants are going to have healthier essential oils. So it's really important that when we're sourcing our essential oils, that we know where we're getting them from, and um, that would give us more dependability and reliability of the essential oil as we use it in our own lives. So um, it is essential oils are actually a volatile substance. So it's 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 from plants. We're not using synthetic ones. We're not talking about synthetic oils today. Um, but volatile actually means that when we hold an essential oil and we just leave it there, I don't need to hold it up to my nose to smell. It actually means the molecules are just moving constantly and they're going to pop out of this bottle um, without me even doing anything. So we'll talk more about that later um, in the DIY part. The purest essential oils are far more powerful than the botanicals from which they are extracted. I actually prefer essential oils over herbs because I find that they are more therapeutic to me because herbs have to go through your digestive system. So they get filtered through your liver. Um, essential oils go straight to your bloodstream. So they can, um, they can have just more of a profound impact like that. And then also because they're going to your, your bloodstream and they're not going through the liver, they don't um, they don't accumulate. They actually go in and out of your body very quickly. And since they're not accumulating, it's very, very hard to um, quote unquote overdose on an essential oil because that's it's just not staying in your system very long. So some people ask me, you know, how often, like what's the dosage of an essential oil? How often do I use it? How many drops? Um, and you know what? It really is the 
the frequency of using your oil is more important than, so I, I use my oils a little bit throughout the day instead of just maybe 10 drops in the morning and then I don't think about it anymore. Does that make sense? So um, we wanna be constantly, you know, um, like we're in the Garden of Eden where God put Adam and Eve, right? We wanna be constantly smelling and experiencing um, like we're in a garden. So um, they are potent, uh, volatile, and versatile. Um, they have many uses, and volatile means the molecules rise quickly in the air and generate a smell. Historically, essential oils have been used for thousands of years. Um, it's really man's first medicine. Um, before you know, we had medicine, like what well, common day medicine, it was you know looking to plants for for healing. So this is how we survived as a species for thousands of years. Um, there are references, over 600 references to essential oils in the Bible, and um, it was most, I guess, more most popularly known um, as one of Cleopatra's uh, finest tips. Right, so her skincare, she bathed in the oils. Um, the Roman soldiers would bathe in essential oils for courage before they went into battle. There was lots of rituals around essential oils and using them um, for emotional support, spiritual support, and physical support. So I have an amazing fact to tell you. One drop of an essential oil contains 40 million trillion molecules. So, okay, that's a lot of zeros, right? I'm my background is in mathematics, so let me break it down for you. We have over 100 trillion cells in our body, so then that means that one drop of essential oil contains, one drop, not one bottle, one drop of essential oil contains enough molecules to cover every single cell in your body 40,000 times. So that's just incredible, right? So that's a lot of molecules in one drop of essential oil. And that's really where I'm gonna go into talking more about the purity of the oil because since there are so many molecules in one drop of essential oil, there really is no guaranteed way that an essential oil company can um, test all those molecules, right? It would take years to test all those molecules um, in a laboratory. So, and the reason why a lab would test them is for purity and safety and all those things with the oil. So we need to make sure that where we're sourcing our oils from are, um, are of the utmost um, uh, ethics because we wanna make sure that we're not putting synthetics in our bodies. Um, if we go online and we Google the dangers of essential oils, it's really, really important that um, you know when we Google that, it said that you'll see so many dangers of essential oils. And that's because essential oils are not always pure. And like you see here, there's so many molecules that it's hard to guarantee the purity. So how do we guarantee that purity? How do we find safe oils? I'm gonna talk about that in a couple minutes. Um, but just so you know, when you're using oils, um, we don't want anything in this bottle than what the plant produces. And if there's any synthetics or adulterants or fillers, um, these molecules can penetrate our cells. They, they go into our skin, they go to the bloodstream, they can cross the blood brain barrier. And if there's something bonded to it that shouldn't be there, it's going to drag it in with it. And we do not want that. So the reason why I give that warning is because I don't want to teach an, an essential oil class and then you go to your favorite health store and buy any old oil that they might have there, um, expecting it to do what I'm telling it you that it can do. Um, because it could do more harm than good if you don't know where you're getting that oil from. So um, I also like to talk a little bit about the frequency of oils because I just find this so fascinating, this topic. Um, the higher your frequency, and this is a really good 2020 topic because the higher your frequency is, the less chance of our body to be able to brew um, viruses and bacteria. Like viruses and bacteria, they thrive in bodies that have a low frequency. Um, so, you know, when we're talking about frequency, we can actually measure frequency, like you can measure the frequency of your heart in an EKG, right? You can measure the frequency of anything. 
And there's a certain um, frequency machine that can measure your body. And um, what happens is when you have, and you probably noticed this within your own self, is that when you have lower thoughts or negative thoughts, right? You can lower your frequency in your body. When you're happy and you're, you know, um, elated and you're having positive feelings, that's going to give you a higher frequency in your body. So when we're using essential oils, essential oils are probably one of the highest frequency substances in the world. So when we're using them, it raises our frequency. On the flip side, when we're drinking alcohol or coffee or things that may not be the best for our bodies, it lowers our frequency. Um, so just so you know, if we were to compare a can of beans versus maybe a stalk of celery from the grocery store, our can of beans is going to have a lower frequency than the stalk of celery, right? So we want to always be raising our frequency for healthier um, vitality. So how are essential oils distilled? So here you can see a big pot, right? So this is a big stainless steel pot. Um, this is holding plant material. I think this might be some kind of tree that got um, you know, shredded and put into this pot. And underneath the pot, underneath the floor where you, you can't see, there's another pot. And that pot is actually going to steam up water and collect the the essential oils from this plant. So when your oils are distilled, they should be distilled only with water. Um, and this is called steam distillation. And the steam is gonna collect the essential oil from the plants and then go up through this big pot. And then up at the, the top of this pot, you can see a little tube that, that's gonna go down. This is called a condenser. So when the steam condenses and turns into water, it's going to um, be easy to separate because the oil and water, they don't mix. So the oil can then float on top of the water. The water can then be chilled down to an ice cube and then the oil can just easily just pour off of that water. Um, there's four basic extraction methods of essential oils. I just talked to you about steam distillation and that's that's when only water is used through steam to extract the oil from the plant. There's also cold pressing, which you're probably familiar with when um, with like olive oil or something, right? So cold pressing is there's no heat, it's just squeezed. Most of our citrus oils, so orange, lemon, tangerine, grapefruit, they are cold pressed from the rind of that plant. So when you take the zest of a lemon, um, you know, as much as it looks pretty and yellow and bold in your recipe, it really, the recipe is calling for it because the essential oil is in that zest. So when we cold press, when the pressing of the, of the, of the rind, um, the essential oil is squeezed out. There's also something called resin tapping and absolute extraction. I'll talk more about that later. Um, steam distillation is the most common process. I already talked a little bit about this, um, but it is important that when it's steamed that the temperature is controlled. We don't want massive amounts of heat on the plant because it will lower the therapeutic value and also the pressure. Remember, it's going through a condenser, so we don't want to have high pressure um, because we're using the oils for health and wellness, um, we want it, We want that therapeutic value of the oil to stay intact. Um, okay, and then cold pressing, you can see, see here on the bottom, there's um, our citrus fruit, and then put the large weight on it, and the essential oils comes out. So this is specifically used for citrus or fatty oils, like olive oil, um, and... Uh, so yeah, so that's some information about that. We already went over. Citrus oils contain delicate... Uh, citral molecules that are broken down via steam so it's and they become bitter so if you've ever um, cooked lemon in a recipe if you cook it on a high heat it makes the lemon bitter so that's why we stay away from steam distillation for citrus oils okay resin tapping so resin is something that pours out of a tree um, when the tree is cut so this is like our frankincense or myrrh and um so kind of like if you saw uh, maple syrup kind of comes out of a tree, there's certain trees that, you know, not all trees create maple syrup, but there's some trees that will pour out resin. And it's more of a, it's more of a thicker 
type of material than, than your maple syrup. And the resin is there really to help kind of put a scab on the tree to help heal it. Um, but what it does is because it's, it's there to help heal the tree, it has lots of medicinal properties. And then we can grab that resin and then put that in the steam distiller um, to extract frankincense, myrrh, copaiba is another one. Uh, the resin is collected from the plant and steam distilled, which gives rise to the essential oil. There's two oils that use absolute extraction. Um, this is a complicate, complicated technique because it uses a solvent, and that's because jasmine and neroli, which use absolute oil extraction, they are very, very delicate plants. So we don't want to have heat, and we can't use the cold pressing, so um, we need another um, substance to help get the essential, extract the essential oil. So um, the solvent helps to pull out the essential oil from the plant without compromising the integrity of the oil. So that's absolute extraction. It's a little bit more technical, but there's only neroli and jasmine are the only two. So characteristics of a genuine essential oil is that they quickly penetrate the tissue of the skin. They contain some of the most powerful antioxidants. So if you know what an antioxidant is, is it's, it's measured by an ORAC test. Um, and I would say, let me remember, it's actually clove essential oil has off the charts highest ORAC value. Um, so this, you know, it's, it's a, that's, that's what makes essential oil so powerful to act as a preservative. I often get the question of how long will my bottle last? You know, well, does it have expiration date? It does not have expiration because of the antioxidant properties. It doesn't go rancid. So we know from Egyptian tombs that we will take out, um, they have alabaster jars of essential oils in, in the Egyptian tombs, and we test them and they're still therapeutic today. So your essential oil bottle, as long as it's pure, there's nothing in here except what the plant produced, um, it will last about one to 2,000 years. All right. Essential oils can benefit the body in several ways, enhancing mood, support overall wellness and well-being, maintaining healthy body systems, and promote relaxation. So it... Um, if you've all been in the year 2020, as I have, you can see how essential oils can be a very, very important tool for, for this year for just um, overall wellness. Um, and then there's many different constituents that have the ability to pass the blood-brain barrier, making essential oils very, very important to um, support our feelings and our feelings of um, de-stressing, happiness, um, just, you know, making that effect. So if you ever walked into a store, um, maybe like a candle store, or um, I've walked into Bed Bath & Beyond, and you get that, that smell, right? And if you're like me, by the time I walk out of that store, that smell has caused me to have a horrible headache. And, um, what happens is those smells that we're smelling actually cross the blood brain barrier, but do it in a way that it, it just goes in through, in through, um, in a way that's not conducive to how nature created it. Right. But when we walk into a garden or some smells that are from nature, those molecules put, cross through the blood, blood brain barrier in a very natural way. Even the smell of say apple pie, it crosses the blood brain barrier. Um, in fact, that's why when certain smells create an emotion because it has a memory attached to it, it's because the essential oils are accessing the limbic system in the brain. So it's really powerful in, in um, creating memories and um, we always have oils diffusing in our home. All right, so when we're purchasing essential oils from a supplier, we the supplier must own their own farm. So remember I talked earlier before about the purity and how we really can't have a laboratory that tests the essential oils for safety because there's so many molecules in that one drop that it would take years to test for for purity so we need to do it about we need to go about it a different way and to do that the supplier must own their own farm so meaning the supplier of your essential oil should not be buying their oil from a vendor they need to monitor that whole process the farms must be free of pesticides, herbicides, and chemical fertilizers. The oils must be tested in labs to ensure that there's been no cross-contamination um, and that there's optimal levels of the bioactive compounds. 
The supplier must also be completely transparent. I've been to essential oil farms. I can go to them at any time. Um, that's transparency to me. That means that, that they have nothing to hide. Um, so there's these steps, the seed, cultivate, distill. This is that distill, that big pot that we talked about in the middle here um, that we talked a couple slides ago. Testing and sealing of the bottle. So you want to make sure that the quality of this entire five-step process is monitored by your essential oil supplier. Um, if they get their oil, you know, after distillation, which most essential oil companies do, they buy from their vendor after a distillation process, then they just test it and seal it up with their label on it. Um, there's no way to know if that essential oil is pure. So the example that I give most often is, um, because it, it's so common, is tea tree oil. So if you ever seen tea tree oil, um, it actually has a similar smell to turpentine, and that's because there's a molecule in tea tree oil that is very, very, chemically speaking, is very, very similar to turpentine. Um, so what some unethical suppliers will do is they will dilute the tea tree oil with turpentine so that when it's sold to the supplier, the supplier will test it, and it will test as pure tea tree oil, even though there's turpentine in it. So that's not cool. Um, I actually had a friend who was buying tea tree oil from a local grocery store, and she's like, Jen, those oils are amazing. I used tea tree oil on a blemish. It got rid of it the next day. It left me with a burn mark. Essential oil should not leave you with a burn mark. Um, that's turpentine, <laughs> right? So there was turpentine in her tea tree oil, and that, that's not cool. So her supplier was either not being ethical and putting turpentine in the oil, or her supplier was being ethical and purchased it from a vendor, tested it, put it in the bottle, and didn't know that there was turpentine in it. So there's many ways to manipulate the oil so that it will pass the test. So you want to make sure that your supplier is doing the whole five-step process and is transparent in it. Okay, so what does purity mean? We've talked a lot about purity already, um, but additives and impurities um, can affect the the uh, effect of the essential oil. So we don't want any additive or impurities in there because um, it can be contaminated and the final result could be toxic. Um, so there's four grades of essential oils. There's therapeutic grade. This is the highest grade of what I use for my family. Um, and these, these essential oils not only are organic and um, raised responsibly, but they are also of the optimal levels for the natural compounds to have the most therapeutic grade for me. So these are done um, at certain, the plants are harvested at a very specific time of the year. The plants are, um, you know, maybe harvested and they have to wait a while before they're distilled. So the process is very, very specific for each plant. Each plant requires a different process of, of harvesting and distilling. Um, some some um, plants need a higher steam temperature in the steam or a lower temperature in the steam. So you really have to know your plants. Organic essential oils are labeled as um, are labeled as such, right? They're labeled as organic, and they're from plants that pass growing standards, but they may not have the therapeutic grade that that you can rely on and will be dependable for a therapeutic property. All right, then we also have extended or alterated oils. These are con considered fragrance grade um, because they're for they're labeled for uh, aromatic use only. I would not recommend this type of oil for uh, fragrance grade because you don't know what it's going to be extended or altered with. And then there's also synthetic oils, which are even not not good at all. Um, these are nature identical oils. Um, it's very easy right now for companies to make nature identical oils um, because you know we just have a lot of technology. So they can make uh, essential oils that look identical to what they are. Um, usually your nose will know, <laughs> but there's no guarantee, and they're created in laboratories. So the bottle should be labeled. So here I have um, an oil, and this oil is actually labeled for, it says 100% um, pure therapeutic grade essential oil supplement. So this label has a direction on it that I can take it internally, 
And then this label um, says 100% pure therapeutic grade essential oil. And this oil has directions on it that I can apply it topically, or I can put it in a diffuser and use it aromatically. So how do we use our oils? There are three ways to use your oils. The first way is aromatically. So here I have a diffuser pictured. Um, you can diffuse, I prefer an ultrasonic diffuser. You can place a drop in your hands and just smell it, right? That's really, really easy. Um, and you can smell directly from the bottle. So that is the cheapest way <laughs> to diffuse your oils, just right from the bottle. Or your cheapest diffuser would be a cotton ball. So you can add two or three drops to a cotton ball and place that. So I'm going to show you, because this is a DIY class, a quick little hack. This is actually, um, I purchased on Amazon and it's a little piece of wood that you can, you can see um, with a little hole in it. And this is your, a great way to, so this is actually a black spruce essential oil, and you can add a drop of the oil to the wood, and you can put some string, it has a little spot in there for string. Now you can use wooden beads, um, you can use lava rock, there's so many different options of natural um, diffusers like this. And then you can just thread your string in it and make it an ornament um, for your trees. So your, if you have a fake tree, it can smell like your, um, this is uh, black spruce, or uh, you can use white fir or pine, um, any kind of Christmassy smell, right? And I can hang this from my rear view mirror in my car. I can hang this, um, I mean, there's so many different places, right? So where you would wanna have that aroma. Um, so, but it's a nice way of, of adding it to your tree or a wreath um, to make it have that more Christmassy smell. So that's a, a neat DIY to have. And like I said, you can use any kind of natural um, substances. This was a really cute one that I had found on Amazon. And if you want to contact me at, at my website, plusoils.com, I can give you the link to this. Um, of on Amazon, but there's different things that you can do to, to find natural substances. Oh, pine cones is another one. You can add a couple drops to a pine cone and put it in a bowl. So these are ways that we're diffusing the oils naturally. Uh, we don't put essential oils in a humidifier unless it's specified by the manufacturer, and I've never found a humidifier. So the reason why you don't want to do that is the humidifier plastic is not made to tolerate the essential oil, so it can actually degrade the machine. Uh, and that's why I recommend a high quality diffuser as well. Another way is taking it internally. And like I said, you wanna make sure that the label says that it's a supplement and can be taken internally. You can add it to a glass of water or hot water if you wanted to make a tea. Um, and, or you can put it in a vegetable capsule or even in a recipe. So another neat DIY I have um, is if you get cashews, you can heat up some olive oil um, with some rosemary, and then you can take off the heat, you can um, take, take the olive oil off the heat, add some sea salt, and then I'll add some lemon oil and rosemary essential oil and drizzle that on my toasted cashews. So that makes a great DIY if you wanted to gift that or have it for the holidays, it is scrumptious. Um, and if you go to my website, I just added it because I know maybe you're not taking notes as quickly as I'm talking. So um, I have that, that recipe on my blog. It's at plusoils.com and then just click blog and you can see that recipe there. Um, okay, topical application is for, um, if we want, this is what we're most, commonly used like in a massage, right? So if we're applying it to our body, um, suggested places would be your feet or your spine or the base of your skull. Um, if you wanted to smell it, even your hair, you can put apply it in your hair and you could smell it. Um, so there's many ways to apply it topically, although you wanna use some common sense. So if you if you have a, your elbow is bothering you and you wanna put oils on your elbow, you're not gonna put it on the bottom of your feet, right? But the bottom of the feet are a good place for any kind of chronic um, overall body wellness stuff. 
um, so is the spine. If you think of the nerves in your spine that act like little roads that travel to all the parts of your body, the essential oils will travel on those roads and the spine is a really good place for that. You can also create homemade bath and beauty products such as uh, sugar scrubs, creams, bath salts. Um, so that leads me to my next DIY, which is bath salts. So this is a jar that I have and I added some Epsom salt. I get these Epsom salts from Costco. So it's the Dr. Teal's Epsom salts and they are um, a great price at Costco. And you can fill a jar up um, with some salt and then all you're gonna do next is add a drop of your favorite calming relaxing essential oil so this one I'm gonna do a little ylang ylang and ylang ylang is a beautiful feminine smell um, it is most definitely what Cleopatra bathed in <laughs> um, and also another one I like is peace and calming this is a really great blend um, peace and calming is, it's a, it's a, it's a classic blend of essential oils. So that is, um, great for bathing, you know, something that's relaxing and, um, and then you can just put it in your jar and then shake it up. And that's how I do DIYs. Cause I am not a crafter, but my daughter is a crafter and she is 12 and she made these great bath bombs that she, she, she and you know what I tell you they are they're phenomenal because the thing with baths is that they um it's water right you're in your bath so when we add an essential oil to the water it's hard to kind of get the the oil agitated and this bath bomb did a great job of dispersing I noticed the oil all through the bath um and it just smelled lovely so I recommend um, if you're more into DIYs than I am, um, you know, I, I like to keep things simple. And I think this is a great DIY gift to give someone. But if you want to get a little more advanced, you can make bath bombs with your oils. And also on my blog, um, plusoils.com forward slash blog, same place where the rosemary lemon cashews are. If you scroll down a little more, you'll find the recipe for the bath bombs. And oh, my daughter's right here. Lily, was was it difficult to make the bath bombs? Um, not really. No. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Okay. Hello. So this is Lily. Come on, come on, come on. So what oil did you add to this? Would you add like something like joy or peace and calming? Yeah. Something relaxing, right? Something that smells nice. All right. All right. Cool. So she made these, and if you're her grandma, you'll probably get one for Christmas. <laughs> so, um, so that is topical application. All right. Um, and then you can also layer your oils one on, on top of each other. Um, also topical application, you might need a carrier oil. So let's talk about carrier oils. These are our vegetable oils. These are not essential oils. They come from, um, you know, like olive oil or grapeseed oil or jojoba oil. And they have more of a greasy texture to them, where essential oils are thin and they absorb into your skin really quickly. Um, your carrier oils are greasier and they help to add surface area to your, so if you wanted to um, you know, apply it to your back, you might need a lot of drops to get all over your back, right? But if you use a carrier oil, it covers that whole surface area. It stretches that oil out to cover more area. Um, so then the other thing about carrier oils is sometimes essential oils can be spicy or hot. So peppermint oil, or this is a blend called Thieves, which has some cinnamon in it, or um, oregano essential oil, they are spicy oils and they can create a burning sensation to the skin. It's not necessarily dangerous, but it doesn't feel good. And this is where we use a carrier oil. And it's never too late to dilute your oil with a carrier oil. Um, it is used for dilution. And um, okay, so these are examples, coconut oil, almond oil, grapeseed oil, jojoba oil, olive oil. It ensures the application of the essential oil is comfortable and it also prevents waste of using too much oil to, to cover so much surface area 
couple tips. We never put essential oils in the eyes or the ears. If you accidentally do get it in your eyes or ears, because sometimes we touch a bottle and then we itch our eye and we're like, oh my God, I didn't realize I had that on my finger. Um, don't use water. Remember I said oil and water don't mix. So we flush with a carrier oil. If a skin sensitivity occurs, we dilute with a carrier oil, again, not water. Citrus oils are photosensitive. So if you're going to use something like lemon oil and apply it on your skin, it's not too much of a problem this time of year in the winter time, but um, you want to you know, not go in the sun afterwards. And I only ingest Young Living oils because they are labeled with the supplement label. Um, so I never ingest any other oils. Um, also about ingesting is you never want to put it in a plastic bottle. Remember, same reason we don't put it in a humidifier. It could break down the plastic. Um, so I'm using either a stainless steel water bottle or silicone um, or glass. Okay, so lavender is a great calming scent. It's probably the most popular essential oil, right? You know, for sleeping, you can put it in, oh, lavender would be a great one to put in your bath bomb or bath salts, right? Um, you can put it in, um, make a spray. Um, here's another DIY. You can get a spray bottle. And this, this is, guys, I tell you, this is like the easiest DIY. You just get a spray bottle from Amazon, add some water, and then add your lavender, a couple, like three drops of lavender, and then you have a beautiful spray bottle that you can use to spray your laundry, um, or you can make it a mask spray. So you can spray your mask and make your mask smell, um, you know, just fresher. And I like it um, as an added boost to support my healthy immune system while I'm wearing the mask. Um, so you can use other oils like, I like um, this blend called Raven is a blend of different eucalyptus oils. So this is a great one. The Raven would be great for making a mask spray. Um, but you can make linen sprays, pillow sprays. There's so many different sprays that you could use. Um, or if you're just stressed out because it's, you know, holidays and um, there's a blend called Stress Away that is, um, smells a little bit like, uh, um, sorry, I'm blanking out, um, vanilla. It smells a little like vanilla and lime, and it's got a little woodsy smell in there too. And Stress Away is a great one for a mask spray as well. Um, I also like, this is an old essential oil bottle that I have here, and you can buy tops from Amazon that spray tops that fit on your essential oil bottle. So this is a great way to upcycle old essential oil bottles. So this, um, you know, if you have an empty bottle, you can just pop the top off, right? And then put your spray top on that you could get from Amazon. Just, just Google or just search on Amazon um, spray tops that fit essential oil bottles. And you can just pop that on the bottle and that works great as, um, you know, upcycling an old bottle and also turning it into a, a handy spray that, you know, this is travel size that I can, um, you know, keep in my purse, carry with me, spray it on my mask as I go about my day. Um, so mask sprays or um, even sanitation sprays, you know, there's so many different sprays that you can have throughout your day. Um, so that's, that's good. Okay, so lavender we talked about. Peppermint is probably our most my most popular oil. Um, we can use it to support a healthy digestive system. It is um, great to make peppermint brownies, to add it to a brownie recipe. It's a, it has a cooling sensation. So if you, oh, another one, um, if you're feeling overheated, you can make a spray. This is an, another um, spray bottle. Is um, You can make a spray with peppermint oil and then just use it as a spray on yourself um, to cool you down and and just make that you feel refreshed and um, if you have some tension uh, you can use a peppermint spray there's so many ways to use peppermint but it is cooling so it might not be unless you're feeling overheated um, it might not be the best one for winter time when it is cold um, but it is great for a lot of things um, it's great for you know you can get a little bit of peppermint a dab of it 
and put it under your tongue, maybe after dinner to you know suppress any kind of unhealthy pickings. Um, or you can add it to your peppermint brownies and eat them. <laughs> so frankincense is, oh, I forgot to bring frankincense down here, but frankincense was a gift given to the Christ child. Um, it has a very earthy smell to it. We talked about frankincense earlier when we talked about the resin tapping, right? And it, it cut, the resin comes out of the tree and then they, they, um, put that into the steam distiller. So frankincense is great for meditation, grounding. If you're feeling really stressed right now, get a drop of frankincense in your hand and rub it on your shoulders. It's very relaxing to the body. Um, it's also great for the appearance of healthy skin. So you can make a, um, a for a DIY gift, you can get um, some oil, carrier oil that's great for skin like jojoba oil. Um, and mix it with a couple drops of frankincense. You can even add some lavender in there to make a beautiful skin serum. Um, that would be a luxurious gift. And gosh, I mean, it would take just a couple drops of frankincense to make a, a bottle of serum. So it really is, um, DIY is a great affordable way to be gift giving. Um, and in that bottle, this is in the picture is a five milliliter bottle. So it's about this size. And there are about, I would say, 80 to 100 drops of essential oil in a bottle this size. So it could go a long way. Um, but frankincense is a very, very, um, it's a very great oil. It's also good for supporting a healthy immune system. I'll get a drop of frankincense um, and even put it under my tongue if I need to, to, to support my immune system. So um, it has a lot of uses and it's very versatile. Oh, Thieves is a blend. I had talked a little bit about this earlier. This blend, Thieves, is one of my most favorite used oils. Um, it is uh, great for supporting a healthy immune system. It got its name Thieves, which is kind of a weird name, right? Thieves. Um, it's got its name because there were thieves during the plague in the 14th century that were stealing from the dead and dying. And um, when they were apprehended by the king, the king said, we would give you less of a punishment if you tell us how you avoided the plague. Um, hint, hint, 2020. <laughs> so um, thieves would be a great oil to add to a spray bottle of water that you can make for a mask spray, right? Um, so thieves is a great immune, um, immune immunity um, support oil. And this one is in a white bottle. So I can take this, it's labeled as an oil supplement. So I can add it to some water to, um, to make like a tea with it, like some warm water. And I can add that to that. Um, eucalyptus radiata is in here. It's a species of eucalyptus that um, may help maintain a healthy respiratory system. So great oil for 2020, right? Um, some people actually apply thieves to the bottom of their feet every day, no matter what, um, in the evening. And, and that's, that's their ritual is they do that. And that is, I think, a really good habit to get into for 2020. Um, all right. So that is, let me make sure I covered everything of all my DIYs. I do. Um, I am so grateful that you came on this webinar. If you go again to plusoils.com, this is my website, and you go to the blog, I do have the recipes there for the rosemary cashews and the sea salts, uh, or the bath bombs, I mean, the bath bombs and the rosemary cashews. So you can go to that blog and see that. And you can contact me on that page too if you have any questions. But also if you have questions, you can write them in the chat here and we can also see them. So um, Molly, do you know if anyone has any questions? Hi, um, we don't have any questions yet. Okay. Um, I'll allow a minute or so, I guess, for people to ask their burning questions. Um, okay. <laughs> and just so everybody knows too, we are gonna, um, we are recording this. So if you ever need to go back and, um, refresh yourself on some information shared, you can do that. That'll be posted pretty soon. Um, so we'll just just uh, wait just a moment, see if okay. anything comes in. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it was a pleasure to, to be here today. Thank you, thank you so much for coming back. It's always nice to 
yeah. to work with you. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. I, oh, we do have one. Okay. Um, someone asked about the thieves oil. Is that safe to put on your tongue? On your tongue. It is very spicy for your tongue. Um, I there's some people who can handle it and some people who can't. Right. There's some people who can smell right from the bottle. And then there's some people who have to hold it down lower and kind of waft it up. It all depends on your sensitivity to it. Um, under your tongue is actually less sensitive. So what you could do, and I wouldn't get a whole drop. I just kind of like brush on the side and you get less than a drop and you could put that right under your tongue. So that's a way to do it. Um, and, you know, like I said, that's even better than getting a full drop if you're doing it more frequently than just say like, once a day. Okay, thank you. Um, that looks like that's our only question. Um, so I guess we'll wrap up. Um, thanks everybody for joining us and thank you again, Jen. Um, and I hope everybody has a um, happy and safe upcoming holiday season. Great, all right, have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye everybody.